out, Caesar, no! No. Even when humans violated the rules, the benevolent Caesar still did not harm them. He merely threw their weapons into the river and drove them back to the human territory. However, upon returning home, Caesar heard the news of his wife falling ill. He hurriedly rushed to the room where the midwife told him that his wife caught a cold due to not resting properly after giving birth. Meanwhile, Malcolm felt that going back would only be a lost cause, so he risked going up the mountain again to find Caesar. However, he found Caesar's wife barely clinging to life. I have medicine. Caesar, helpless, seeing his wife in such agony, had no choice but to accept help. In gratitude, Caesar promised to give them another day to repair the hydroelectric plant and sent apes to assist in the repairs. On the other side, Koba returned after gathering intelligence. He told Caesar's son that humans were dangerous and that they needed to find Caesar promptly. When he arrived at the hydroelectric plant and saw the apes helping with the dam repairs, he couldn't bear it any longer. Why Caesar? One Caesar! Caesar! Koba hurriedly came to demand to see Caesar, infuriated by what he discovered in the city. Humans were stockpiling weapons enough to destroy the entire Ape home. Humans attack your sons. You let them stay. Caesar love humans more than apes. More than your Kaisa, Unawar of the Arms, became enraged at Koba's provocation and tackled him to the ground, then relentlessly pounded his face. He refused to allow his authority as a leader to be trampled upon, then grabbed Koba and threw him harshly to the ground. When Koba's face was covered in bruises and blood, Caesar regained his senses because there was a rule among the apes against killing each other. Seeing that no one understood him, Koba extended his hand to Caesar, pleading for forgiveness. Caesar agreed, Koba turned and left. Upon returning, his confidant asked why he didn't tell Caesar about the weapons. Koba, feeling estranged, believed that Caesar would no longer trust him. The next day, Koba found two humans inspecting guns and played the fool, somersaulting towards them. Despite their cautiousness, he nonchalantly sat down beside them. Seeing the men drinking, he took a swig from the bottle, only to spit it out the next second, amusing the men who laughed heartily. When Koba noticed their guards drop, he gleefully picked up the guns, turned his back, fired a burst at one man, then killed the other amidst his horror. He swiftly returned to the ape tribe with the firearms. Meanwhile, Caesar had helped humans repair the electricity, and with their assistance, Caesar's wife recovered from her illness. However, as they celebrated, Caesar suddenly spotted Koba below, aiming a gun at him. A shot rang out, hitting Caesar's shoulder, leaving him incredulous as he fell heavily off the cliff. Chaos engulfed the tribe instantly. Koba's followers seized the opportunity to set fires. Caesar's son was the first to spot the guns, while Koba, sensing his moment, rushed to grab the firearms, shouting loudly. Humans! Kill Caesar! Burn Abel! Apes must attack human city! Come! Fight for Caesar! By the way, if you enjoy our movie recaps, we're currently hosting a giveaway for our audience. We're excited to announce that a brand new scooter awaits one lucky subscriber. Don't miss out. Subscribe and follow us to stay tuned for more updates. The fury burned within all the apes as Koba ordered the weak to stay home while the rest marched into the city to attack humans. Under Koba's leadership, the apes quickly reached the armory and seized weapons. Meanwhile, humans were still reveling in the arrival of electricity, completely unaware of the impending danger. It wasn't until the apes rode in on horseback, looming over the city, that panic set in and they hurriedly climbed the city walls. To boost morale, the mayor picked up a megaphone. We are survivors! They will not get through these doors! 
With humans regaining their confidence and awaiting the arrival of the apes, Koba led his ape army swiftly, but the first wave of attacks resulted in heavy casualties. Many apes fell on the battlefield, yet Koba urged them to continue the assault. Even as he watched apes fall, then he mounted a horse and charged forward, wielding jewel pistols like a sharp blade. The sight of Koba stunned the apes, he alone, blocking all human defenses. And the ape army surged forward. The mayor, seeing this, hastily grabbed a rocket launcher, aimed at the oil barrels below, fired a shot, blocking the advance and taking down many apes. Koba, seeing the flames blocking their path, ordered the apes to climb the power poles and advance from above. But as they climbed, they faced intense firepower, causing them to lose their way. Seeing their comrades fall, Little Kong immediately grabbed a gasoline tank and threw it towards the humans. With teamwork, the apes broke through the defenses. However, in the next moment, Koba, consumed by rage, charged out of the flames, boasting victory to his comrades. Suddenly, a shot from a tank caught him off guard. Angered, he looked back to see humans arriving in a tank for reinforcement. Witnessing the formidable firepower of the tank, Koba unleashed all his strength, pouring bullets and swiftly maneuvering to climb onto the tank. He then grabbed a man, knocked him out with two punches, and slipped into the tank. Koba seized control of the tank's firepower. Thus, with the tank's cover, the apes successfully breached the gate. Meanwhile, on the other side, Cornelia and Zira found the faint signs of Caesar as they descended the mountain. Together, they dragged Caesar into the car. However, Caesar didn't mention Koba's betrayal, but instead worriedly inquired about the safety of his family. Upon hearing this, Caesar twisted in sorrow. Malcolm immediately drove back to the city to get Caesar treated. On the way, they passed by a house, and Caesar tapped on the window, requesting to stop. It turned out to be Caesar's former home. They laid Caesar on the couch, and upon examining his injuries, Zira indicated they needed a surgical kit to treat him, which was in the city. Malcolm immediately volunteered to take the risk. Meanwhile, on the human side, their defenses collapsed entirely, and they were driven by apes into the church. Koba commanded the apes to chase the humans onto the rooftop, but one man picked it up an iron rod and swung it. Seeing this, Koba snatched the rod and handed it to Rocketson, instructing him to kill the man. Little One hesitated, stating that if Caesar were present, he wouldn't want them to act this way. This statement infuriated Koba, who dragged Little One upstairs and then threw him to the ground, <coughs> intending to use his death to intimidate the others. Apes, follow Koba. Seeing Koba's brutality, the apes could only remain silent. They then captured most of the humans, locking them in cages and stationed soldiers to guard the area. After completing these tasks, the apes returned to the city to search for remaining humans. Caesar's eldest son witnessed loyal comrades being imprisoned, but facing overwhelming force, he couldn't save them and had to comply with Koba's orders. Meanwhile, Malcolm had entered the city, but as he prepared to leave after administering the medicine, the apes arrived. He hastily took refuge in a nearby house, where he unexpectedly encountered Caesar's eldest son. Malcolm fervently gestured for him not to shoot, and Blue Eyes seemed to recall his father Caesar's advice. However, just as Blue Eyes was about to leave, Malcolm called out to him. Father. Moments later, he found himself face to face with Caesar at home. Upon seeing the wounds on Caesar's body, he instinctively showed hostility towards the humans. But Caesar quickly intervened, telling him that it was all Koba's doing. Blue Eyes finally understood that it was all Koba's conspiracy. Afterwards, encouraged by his father, Blue Eyes returned to the city. Meanwhile, Caesar's recovery from the surgery was swift. He picked up a camera and watched footage of himself from before, tears welling up in his eyes. Who was that? video. Hey, good man. At the same time, Blue Eyes had returned to the city, rescuing all his comrades. As they reached the ground, they found all their loyal comrades unharmed. Caesar knew it was time to strike back. With Malcolm's help, they managed to bypass the humans and enter the building. 
Caesar led his capable lieutenant swiftly to climb to the top of the tower. In the showdown between Caesar and Coba for leadership, Caesar, weak, Coba, weaker. Coba dropped his machine gun and launched the first attack against Caesar. With Caesar already injured, he was quickly forced to retreat in the first round of combat. During the struggle, both fell from the iron frame, leaving Caesar badly shaken and Coba severely injured with a cut to his waist. Grabbing a rod, Coba get into his aggressive persona, relentlessly swinging the rod at Caesar. Seizing the opportunity while fleeing, Caesar managed to strike back, then swiftly picked up an iron frame to confront Coba. Caesar, brother, to human. Coba, fight for Ave! Free Ave! Kill me! Coba, fight for Coba! Coba erupted in rage, kicking Caesar and then swinging the iron rod with all his might. However, the relentless swings soon took a toll on Koba, who clutched his wounded waist. Caesar's earlier restraint was merely a prelude to seizing this moment. Finding his opening, Caesar struck with both fists at Koba's injury, then blocked the attacks with his foot before delivering a blow that forced Koba to retreat. Enraged, Koba toppled the iron frame, causing the platform to collapse. Fortunately, both managed to grab onto ropes at the critical moment, engaging in a fierce battle mid-air. Meanwhile, Malcolm encountered the mayor and learned of their plan to blow up the building, unaware that the apes were inside. After careful consideration, Malcolm decided to assist them. He aimed his gun at the mayor and another person, but the mayor, driven by madness, pressed the button regardless. The massive explosion trapped the apes under the wreckage. Caesar immediately rushed forward to rescue them, while Koba regained consciousness and slowly approached his comrades, picking up a gun, indifferent to the lives of his fellow apes. Clearly, Koba had descended into madness, continuously firing his gun. Seeing his fellow apes severely injured, Caesar erupted in fury and lunged at Koba. Driving him onto the iron frame, Koba attempted to climb upward, but the pain from his waist wound hindered him. As he gathered strength to ascend, Caesar intervened. Koba stared blankly at Caesar. Caesar had lost his second-in-command, Koba, but there was no time for mourning. He had to swiftly lead the apes back to the jungle. While organizing, he encountered Malcolm, who informed him that the mayor had contacted the military and they would soon arrive. Caesar realized that this battle was inevitable. After bidding farewell to Malcolm, he prepared to lead his family and tribe to rebuild their home. What kind of war the apes would face next remains to be seen. Stay tuned for the next installment.